This is what I've learned as a security analyst working through my early career. So for those of you who are new to my channel, hi, my name is Sandra and I currently work as a cybersecurity analyst. I have about three and a half years of experience and I'm currently about 10 months in into my second job in cybersecurity out of college. I graduated with a degree in information science and technology and prior to my first job out of college, I had no experience at all in cybersecurity outside of a few classes that I took. But my background was primarily in software engineering and data analytics all throughout college. So I wanted to make this video specifically on what I've learned, whether it's lessons or things I wish I could have done when I was first starting out in my career. And I'll be sharing that list with you guys today. So the first thing I want to cover is keeping up with cybersecurity news and trends. So this is definitely something I preach nowadays on my channel, but Back then, when I first started out in my career, I was very much not involved in cybersecurity news whatsoever. In my first job, I was working for a large financial institution, and we actually had a team dedicated to cyber threat intelligence and just overall cybersecurity news. And their job was primarily reading cybersecurity news, keeping up with different trends, with different nation states, with the vulnerabilities or exploits that attackers are using. And as someone who was part of the cybersecurity team, I was basically a consumer of, of that information that they compiled in a bi-weekly or monthly report and I obviously read that every once in a while just to keep up with cybersecurity news but the main things I heard about were like the big hacks like Colonial Pipeline, Apache Struts, Solar Winds, basically the big ones. The big ones were the ones I heard about but on a regular basis there are hacks and breaches and articles about these going out on a daily if not hourly basis and cybersecurity news just moves so fast that you can really find yourself being overwhelmed by it so i think the first thing that you should do is create an rss feed of these cybersecurity blogs and news sources that you like to read from and i can list out a few of those here but for the most part nowadays i'll go through this list in the morning once a day so that i'm not overwhelmed and continuously worrying about what's going on in cybersecurity news while i'm working and doing my day-to-day -day things on the job but as a cybersecurity professional it is part of your job to keep up with cybersecurity trends and different things that are going on in the news and you don't want to be the last person to find out especially if it's something that does impact your company or does impact your team and your manager knows about it before you do so i do think even in your early career it's nice to get those good habits in place now so that you're able to down the line also keep up with different news cycles and cybersecurity of course there are also busy periods like the end of the year or if there's some kind of really big hack in the news those may be the times where you really have to keep up with the different news articles that come out on like an hourly basis but i would just say starting that habit is important in your early career and the next thing I want to discuss is keeping yourself secure with a password manager. And I'd like to thank NordPass Business for sponsoring today's video. NordPass Business is one of the best business password managers out there that can help keep you as well as your company's data secure. I think password managers are one of the best ways to protect yourself, especially nowadays with so many different brute force password attacks. A password manager for your business also helps lower different risks across the board for your company. For example, first off, it can save you a lot of time when it comes to resetting passwords for your IT team, as well as having shared secrets and credentials and documents across the network and across your devices for all of your teammates to access so that no one is sharing passwords in an insecure way as well as the fact that it lowers the chances of someone reusing a weak password over and over again because of the fact that NordPass business is able to auto generate you a strong password by default so that you're able to use that directly without having to come up with your own passwords or remembering your own passwords you can also store sensitive information in their secure vault including saving passwords secure notes credit card information, personal information, as well as just general shared items across your team. It really is a great way to keep your information that is important and confidential in a centralized place so that everyone on your team knows where to go if you need to find some information or account credentials that are shared across the team. Using a password manager like NordPass Business also helps you autofill passwords so every time you go to log into a website, you don't have to go through the hassle of going to look for and manually typing in a password for an account. They also have a way to detect breaches early where they show you low and high risk data breaches across all the members of your team so you're able to see where your weak points are and where you need to change your passwords. You can also give and revoke access effortlessly within your dashboard as well as enhance the overall security of your organization with their company-wide settings. See NordPass Business in action now using the code and the link on my screen as well as linked in the description below. And I would definitely recommend checking it out to help increase the productivity and security of your teams across your company. Thank you so much to NordPass Business for sponsoring today's video and let's get back to the rest of the topics. The next thing I want to discuss is asking for help when you need it. I hope this goes without saying but honestly when you're just getting started you usually don't know 
99% of the information that you're trying to know. And because of that, it can be very overwhelming when you just get started on the job. And another thing when you get started is that is that you don't want to continuously bother your teammates or bother your manager with questions. And that is, believe me, something that I went through in my early career. Even nowadays, I try to keep my questions to a minimum. Unless I really can't find the answer on my own, then I'll go and ask my manager or my teammates. But for the most part, I still feel that way and I'm definitely a bit reserved about asking questions. But when it comes down to the important things and the important questions, I will go and ask them because, because at some point you're going to reach problems where you're not able to solve a problem without finding an answer to the solution. And sometimes that is just something that's not written down, maybe it's not documented, and you have to go to a person directly to get the answers that you need to fix a problem and and work on the things that you need to work on to move forward. So definitely don't be afraid to ask for help when you need it. Ask for clarifications, ask for ask for feedback. I think also practicing that as a muscle in your early career is going to be really important moving forward because it also just helps you grow faster and learn at a faster pace because if you're withholding a question for a long time, maybe for like the first few months of your job, you're just you're just trying to tough it out and learn everything on your own without asking for clarifications on the things that you don't know, then it will take longer for you to pick up the skills that you need to pick up to get to a point where you're as knowledgeable as your other teammates or even as your manager. So definitely try to ask questions when you need to and ask for help when you need it. It is okay not to know all the answers and honestly it is very much expected that you don't know them as as you're someone who's just starting out in your career. No one expects you to know all the answers to all the questions especially for things that you haven't even worked on before and that's even feedback that i've gotten personally in my early career and and definitely try not to take things to heart if you do get feedback because it does provide you insight into areas of improvement that you can work on so that you're able to become better so that you're able to grow and learn more as you go on in your career the next thing i want to discuss is to be wary of alert fatigue so this is definitely something i think I always want to keep in mind whenever I'm thinking about about working in cybersecurity in general. Cybersecurity is notorious for dealing with alert fatigue, which is basically when there's just so many different alerts and and pings and anomalies and tickets that may be coming in on a regular basis. That can definitely be very overwhelming when you're just getting started, and you definitely don't want to burn out, especially when you're just starting out in your career, because burnout definitely has lingering effects. I think that is definitely important to note. You don't want to work yourself so hard to the bone when you're just starting out, because that can definitely hurt you long term with regulating your stress levels at work as well as finding work-life balance that is going to be really hard so these are all things that you want to keep in mind while you're going through your early career don't stress yourself out too much to the point where you're so stressed out to the point where you have burnout because that typically is going to be long-term stress mentally and physically and it can take a long time to recover from and the last thing i want to discuss is on continuous learning which is your bff if you remember one thing from this video, I really think that keeping in mind that cybersecurity is always continuing to grow and you never know what your next what your next role is going to be, what your next project is going to entail, and oftentimes it really is just about learning as much as you can to be able to help get you to that next step in your career. The skills that you're using today for your current job may not be the skills that you may be using or may need for your next job or your next promotion or to get you to that next salary and you really want to be mindful of that because a lot of what you do in your day-to-day -day is going to change over time as cybersecurity grows as a sector i really think cybersecurity is relatively new compared to you know other tech sectors that maybe that companies have paid more attention to previously like data science and software engineering cybersecurity is like currently the booming field that people want to go into and while i definitely think that's a good thing i also think that it comes with a lot of continuous learning and and continuous improvement when it comes to getting the skills that you want to learn all right so that's it for this video let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below as well as anything else that you'd like to add to this list don't forget to check out nerdpass business linked in my description below and you can use my code as well as the link on the screen to see it in action and try it out for yourself all right so that's it for this video let me know if you guys have any questions if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications i post videos every wednesdays and sundays at 12 p.m and hopefully i'll see you guys in my next video bye